Hi, welcome back to Smoking Cheltenham. Hope you're good. Quarter past three Saturday. It's here. Moment of truth. Clear your diaries. Yeah. We'll get to that. Uh, just a couple to look back on before we get into the weekend. Uh, Tuesday, Huntington, two mile novice hurdle. We saw Dysart Enos there. She was impressive. Justified odds of one to seven, winning by seven and a half lengths. Fast horse, this. Fast horse. She was keen through the race, travelling strongly. Jumped big at the third. I think it might have been the fifth. She was very slow and big. Um, she moved into second, approaching three out. Jumped left there, took it up two out, travelling all over everything. He asked her for a big one at the last and she gave a big one. She gave it plenty rare and she stretched away and won as she liked. Yeah. Didn't really tell us that much, did it? That we don't already know about her. She's a fast horse. Um, it's worth pointing out this race. It ran nearly three seconds slower than the 11-year-old Gooseman over the same course and distance, who'd earlier won a selling hurdle carrying a stone more. So that kind of tells you really, you know, the form's not worth a great deal. She, all we learnt really is she's a fast horse, which we already knew. Uh, she, oh, she jumped big, didn't she? Um, but, you know, hurdle's debut, you'd expect she'll sharpen up and get a bit slicker next time. But really, it's, as I've said before, I mean, the form, it's now run at Ludlow, market race in Aintree and Huntington, good to soft twice, good, good. We know she's a fast horse, but, you know, I, I, I need to see her somewhere like a Cheltenham or an Exeter or a Carlisle or even a Sandown on soft ground, you know. Can she tough it out? I don't know. Oh, sorry, just one minute. Sorry about that. Fucking Amazon man again. You know what it is. Yeah, um, yeah, we didn't learn much about her here, and yeah, for me, bright days ahead every day of the week. Right, uh, it's for me. Ran yesterday. He did plenty wrong as a bumper horse, but still, he ran a good race in the bumper. He came fifth at Cheltenham and didn't get the run of the race there. <laughs> Willie put a hood on him. You know, first half of the race, thought, oh great, he's settled here. And then he seemed to get a bit lit up again and threw in a couple of poor jumps. Came through one snug enough. He's got some ability, this horse. But he still does plenty wrong. Um, you know, always first one of the season, maybe that'll knock the freshness out of him and it'll be more of the finished article next time. We will see. But my feeling is he will get found out when he goes up in class. But Willie has got him out pretty early. And maybe, just maybe, he could develop into a county hurdle type. Uh, he need another three runs for that. And he's got time to do that if he wishes. So maybe he could develop into a county hurdle contender. But I wouldn't have him on my mind for the Supremo Ballymore. That's him. Right then. Got another cracking weekend here, haven't we? The ride continues. Uh, today's Friday. I've just got the one bet today. 
nothing original or exciting about this really 330 Cheltenham, 2 mile 5 grade 2 novice hurdle captain Teak uh, he took the grade 2 Persian war impressively on debut and crucially for this race he ran a blinder in the bumper at this track last season beating just 2 and a half lengths he's just got to sharpen his jumping a little but he's going to relish that stiff finish here and I'd expect he's going to carry his penalty to victory here and go on to the Chalo and probably win that too. There are some good horses in here, some interesting types but I think with that bumper run in the bank yeah, I'd be disappointed if he got turned over here Trying to kind of, it feels like for days we're trying to get evens for this guy. Gave up, went to 10 to 11, gave up, and I ended up backing him at 4 to 5. I think he's around 4 to 6 at the moment. I'd say I'd go down, that's about as low as I go, I think, 4 to 6. But yeah, he's the selection there, and he's the only bet today, really. I did have one more Ida's boy at Wexford at a nicer price, but got took out. That's not a runner. Um, yeah the ground's very heavy at Wexford it was heavy and rain it said so that might be why so then tomorrow Saturday Cheltenham 220 Paddy Power Chase Um Looks a cracking renewal, to be fair. Uh, we've got two Grade 1 winning novices here at the festival. The Real Wacker, only horse to beat Jerry Colomb. And Stage Star, who took the Turners. I think fundamentally the Real Wacker's a better horse, but he does have to give a bit of weight away there. I think the real wacky, I think soft grounds, soft ground you see this guy at his best is three from three on soft ground. Uh, he just runs and gallops, doesn't he? And I think that soft ground, just, you know, it doesn't seem to slow him down. So it gives him a bit of an edge. Matt, the only thing holding me back really is he's just first time out and to win one of these big handicaps you've got to be tuned up you know you've got to be bang on for the race and i'm not sure he will be and that'll be my concern with him i think one horse who will be is h star paul will have this ready to run for its life and that counts for a lot in a race like this. You just wonder with the real Wacker being in there, though, that's probably a negative to his chances because the real Wacker, you'd imagine, will go out at a good clip. And Stage Star is going to be up there. That's not going to help his chance either. This race has been a bit of a bookie's benefit over the last few years and maybe maybe it will be again I'll probably not have a bet in the race if I did have a bet I'd have a very small bet on the real wacker he would be the selection but to be honest I think I'm going to give it a miss this one you don't have to back in these big races you don't um, I much prefer the graded races and the novices but I do like some handicaps, so just if, if I like it also, I'll, I'll back it, you know. But yeah, it's probably a good reason why the bookie spends the, a lot of these races. But um, it's probably a better card at Navan tomorrow. Um, I will be having a bet in the 11.50, I think, the maiden hurdle that opens the card to an half mile. We've got Bo walking in there. 
they were well back last time but disappointed um, obviously someone thinks something of this horse uh, so it wouldn't be surprised if he takes a big step up here but really this is looking like a bit of a match to me between Willie's Dancing City and Gordon Stella's story Dancing City has got some good form he ran behind Ballyburn and Stella's story just got the better of El Atlantic Now, I'm kind of hoping they put Willie's Dancing City in as favourite here and the bet would be Stella Story. I just think he looked like he, he looked a strong stayer. I think he'll benefit hugely from the step up to two and a half on a stiff track like Navan. I think he'll be right up his street. You don't know about the fitness levels there. But presuming they're both at about the same sort of level, I'd, I'd like to tell the story to outstay Dancing City here. Uh, so I hope they put Dancing City in his favour and, yeah, the bet would be tell the story. Right, Lou, going to close the door behind you. Just give me one minute, let me just close the door there. Yeah, so, you know, Gordon loves this Navan meeting and I'll take him to get the meeting off to a winning start here. 205 is a grade two Liz Mullen hurdle, two and a half mile. And really by process of elimination, you come down to Zana here. He's also favoured by the weights. They put him in around six to four, 13 to eight. He's just not a horse I want to be taking that sort of price about. But you look at this and he should be taking it. I just don't know if I can bring myself to bet on him. But he should be winning it. I think I'll probably just sit this one out and kind of cheer on Bob. <laughs> I couldn't be backing him either, but, you know. I think Bob did a lot of us a good favour, didn't he, Bob Ollinger, when he won that Ballymore. Seems like years ago, doesn't it? But, uh, yeah, um, then we move on to the 240, the two mile grade two for three chase. This looks a tasty little race. Um, I kind of toyed with the idea of Saint Roy here, I just think the race might set up for him, but he's not really favoured at the weights. And I wonder if Willie might have left a bit more on him than Dysart Dynamo. Um, Captain Guinness is a grand horse. He's been a brilliant horse for connection. Seems to run his race every day. He won this last year. He's got to be bang there again. Dysart Dynamo. I oh, know plenty wrong but he was savage first time out last year and maybe this will be his day they put him in at 11 to 8 he's not really an horse to be taking a price like that about Captain Guinness 2's 9 to 4 it's another race I'll probably just sit back and watch this one to be honest 315 Two mile one. This is the beginners of the season, isn't it? Well, he's introduced horses such as Duvan, Bator, Footpad in this. And here, this is the launch pad for the six year old son of the legendary Qua Vega. Vassar Vega. <laughs> I've said plenty about this horse. Is he going to be an aeroplane? Is he going to take the chasing division by storm? 
or is he going to crash and burn? Is is the moment of truth? Is where we find out. I hope. I think and I hope we're going to see something special here, and we could be looking at the new Arkle favourite by half past three on Saturday. But I've been wrong about plenty, and I'll be wrong about plenty again. So we'll see. This is what makes the game so good, doesn't it? The uncertainty of it all. I do. I, I hope we get to see. I just. I, I think we will. I think we will. I think he's going to be special. We'll see. But you need two horses to make a race, and we've got two and a bit here. And Henry's also here within the pocket. Who I think these will be one two in the Arkle. He couldn't have had a tougher opponent first time up here. In the pocket, it's Henry's. Fasal Vega were three length in front of him in a supreme in March, and we know. We know in the pocket's going to improve more than three lengths for fences. So Fasal Vega will have to improve again to be beating this fella. I think he will. I think he'll improve plenty. But we don't know, do we, until we see it. It's going to be a great race. Um, I've got to mention Gordon's got St. Felician here. He's no mug either. But really, it should be boiling down to these two. JP's got a few in here, handicaps down the line, these horses. We've already spoke about a couple of them, handicaps down the line. And they're continuing their education here. It should be a cracking race, don't miss it. Quarter past three, clear your diaries. It should be special. Come on, pass out. Alright, Lou. Even Blue's excited about it. <laughs> okay. The bumper that closes the card looks a fascinating contest. Oh, as, as far as the bet goes, I've got plenty on Fassar Vega. We're heavily invested in that horse. Um, so at the likely odds, I'd be guessing we'd probably be looking around four to seven. I'll probably just let it go. Uh, I've got enough invested in this horse. But saying that, if you were getting, I don't know, maybe sort of around four to five mark, something like that, then yeah, I'd be having a little bet on him as well. Yeah. Right. Um. The bumper that closes the card yet, yeah, fascinating contest this. We've got Apples of Brazil there. This horse were punted into 3-1 to one to beat Ballyburn last year on debut. So they hold this horse in some regard. He, on the face of it, a little disappointing there, but 7 for 9. But he were only beaten around 10 lengths and he were promising enough first run. Yeah, so clearly he's held in the highest of regard. So, he's interesting. We've got Gordon's My Trump card. He was high, very, very high catching two and a half mile hurdle run last year. He looks a bit Firefoxy, doesn't he? How they've, you know, he's given him an hurdles debut two and a half, fetching him back to bumpers here. Same connections. Yeah. And then also we've got Gavin's, Gavin Cromwell's Spring de la Mer, who's off that point to point list. Highly regarded horse. Yeah, it should be a fascinating race. Um, and one we'll look back on with interest. I'd say whatever takes this is a classy horse. Right, then on to Sunday, Cheltenham. So I haven't got the final decks through for Sunday yet, but... More often than not, I have most of my bets on a Sunday. It tends to be the best kind of race. And, and probably in terms of overall depth, like it probably is again this week. 
Uh, so I've done my best to go through Sunday even without the sort of decks. Uh, I think it's the best Charlton card of the three days. The 110 Maiden Urgil that opens the card. We have got Teller Name. Teller the Name is jocked up. The Kemble Bro is jocked up. And there's a horse for Nick in there. Kingston Pride is also jocked up. So I'd imagine these three are all going. There's other interesting types in this race. The Kemble Brewery were very impressive. He's unbeaten in a point to point and a bumper at this track. Where he was very impressive last time out. And I'd imagine they'll put him in as favourite. But you know, you know how good I thought that race were. Tell of the name and Django Bay. I think these two, I said these two, I think are graded horses. Django Bay is possibly a grade one horse. And I'm hoping his hurdles experience will give him the edge over the favourite here. It'd be unlucky to bump into another horse as good as Django Bay in a maiden. I'd, I'm hoping they'll put Kemble Brewer in as favourite and I'll be back in tell of the name. The 255 slower, slower. Oh, that's just a great name. It's one of them names, one of the few names you could say the same after 10 parts of Guinness. Slower. Um, this looks a cracking contest if these four all turn up, and I think they do. We've got John Bond, Edward Stone, Nubi Negra, and then it's a De Geet. Edward Stone would be dangerous if coming back to his best, no doubt. He was good at his best. He was brilliant in the Tingle Creek last year. Nubi Negra's on a hat trick in this race. And Edithi, he's had his blowout. He's ready to rock and roll now. He'll be ready for this as well. This is a good test for John Bond. Like I said, I don't think John Bond's... I don't think Cheltenham's especially John Bond's track either. It'd be take a brave man to be smashing into this horse at like one to two. It would. Saying all that, I do expect John Bond to take this. Nicky seems very happy with him. I think he'll take it. But, yeah, one to two, not for me. But, yeah, cracking race in prospect. And, yeah, should be good. Three thirty, Great Wood Hurdle. Big two mile handicap here. Willie's only a matter of time. Could be a handicap block right at the bottom there. You just don't know with this horse. He could go off six to four. He could go off sixteen to one. I think on balance, you're best just kind of ignoring this horse and hoping it doesn't <laughs> skate in. But there is that possibility. Um, I won't necessarily be having a bet here. If I do, it it depends on the ground, and the horse would be Lucia. Now, you might remember last time I said this horse is not one. I don't think she's going to get down and dirty for you. I think she looks after herself a bit. But I think off 136 in an handicap on decentish ground, she could be very dangerous, I think. I think she could just sort of, because she travels, I think she could just cruise round and win on the snaff, maybe. If she has to get off the bridle and battle in any way, I think you've probably done your money. But I do think she's probably got a big handicap in her off that mark on decentish sort of ground. And around 10 to 1. Yeah, if she turns up here, and it, I mean, it can be hard work this race. We've seen it some years. And if, it, if the ground's like that, then I, I wouldn't be playing. I'd be getting it a wide berth. But if it's not too bad and they're getting home well, I'll, yeah, I'll have a play on Lucia. So that's uh, Cheltenham Dunweight. On to Navan. Cracking card here, Navan, on Sunday. 12.15, Mare's Maiden Hurdle. We've got Gavin Cromwell's Bioluminescence. It's not one to be saying after 10 pints of Guinness, is it? 
Uh, point to point winner came second to jump to Marvel in a bumper of Willie's, who then went on and took the Grade Three bumper at Punchers Town. Should be winning this for JP. Looks a nice horse. I don't know what price we're looking at here. If she runs, I'd say anything around four to five or better. She's a bet. So it's very hard to really gauge what the prices are without knowing what the entries are going to be. You know, it could cut up massively, and she could be one to four. But uh, yeah, if she, if she, sort of four to five ish, I'll be playing. 122 Grade 3 Monksfield Novice Erdl, two and a half mile. Gordon has a great record in this race. He's took six out of the last ten renewals with horses such as Death Duty, Sam Crow, and Fury Road. Uh, he's got another one for Giggins Town here, Croke Park. I like this horse. He'd be a confident selection if he turns up here. He came second in a bumper. Well beaten, but plugged on beyond the exciting you know, you ought to know, for Willies. That were kind of a speed test that day, and you only have to look at this horse. He's a great, big, strong, strapping three-mile chaser for down the line. Um, he came out, took his two-mile novice hurdle, his maiden hurdle at Clonmel, jumped a bit left there, heavy ground that day. This track will suit him far better. Um, be perfect for him, I'd suggest, in the van. Nice big galloping left handed track, stiff track. Uh, I think he's going to relish the track and the trip here. Like I say, in the van, I think will be ideal for him. Search for glories in here. He's got a fair sort of level. If there's a grade one horse here, it's Croke Park. Um, I love my bays in this. Came second to a promising type in Primoz up at air that day. Had grade two winner Florida Dreams back in third. I'm kind of hoping that runs. Might be a bit optimistic, but I'm hoping he runs and that just holds the price up a little bit for Croke Park. And if we can get four to six or better, he'd be a confident selection here. Right then, Troy Town. Yeah, like I said, I'm trying to skip through these a bit quicker for the previews, but we're still clocking up a bit of time here. To be fair, we have got three days to cover, haven't we? Oh uh, yeah, big handicaps. Like I say, if I like it, also we'll play it. And the eagle-eyed of you might have noticed my last video came out on Monday and I bought these two horses on Monday and I pinned it to the comments at the top there so you might have noticed that, I don't know. I backed two for this. First one's Hollow Games. He was seven or eights at the time. I had to take sevens because I couldn't get on with the bookies at eights but I'm happy with sevens. I am. Uh, I think you can still get sevens now. Right, Gordon's got a great record in this race. He's took five out of the last ten. Five out of the last ten's carried 11.6 or more, so don't be too worried if the horse you like's got plenty of weight there. Favourites have got a surprisingly good record in this race, taking four out of the last ten. Um, as for the games, he's two from two on the track. A couple of years ago, he took out that Monksfield novice hurdle, and then last year, he won the two-mile one beginners. It were very impressive that day. Jumped and travelled great. He was so impressive, in fact, Gordon seemed to think he were two miler after that. Maybe, maybe he thought that. I don't know. He ran him in two grade ones after that. He got found out in those at two mile. You know, uh, pulled up, I think, in the arc or Ran him again two mile, dropped into an handicap on his final start of the season there, and he ran better. He was outpaced, but he did stay on into fourth, beating around 11 lengths, I think, behind Dino Blue that day, I think. He then came out in the Galway Plate. Uh, 
important to note, Gordon did take that Galway plate with a horse he had tuned up to win on the day. He won, name just escapes me, Ash Tree Meadow. He took that two in a race last, last week at Down Royal. This fella stayed on from the rear into never near a third beat and ten lengths or so. Looked like a race for another day to me. I think this has been a long term plan for this horse. That's what I'm sort of trying to get at here. I think he's going to get hammered. I do. I think he'll go off a well supported favourite. Can see him going off around the 7 to 2 mark and hopefully he can land a bit of a touch for connections here. Saying all that, I could not leave the Devil's Coachman alone either. I think you need him on your side too. He's a grade two winner over hurdles. He should love any cut in the ground. In fact, if he's not cut in the ground, he probably won't run. Um, he ran in the Irish National and he cruised around there looking like a very well handicapped horse, but he just didn't get home over the three mile five there. Um, dropped to three mile here. He's also two from two at Navan. And he's dangerous. He's dangerous. I'd, I'd, I'd imagine Noel's got this guy who goes well fresh. I'd imagine he's got him primed for Sunday. There's a few interesting other horses in this race, but it's maybe not so deep as you'd imagine. Uh, I think the most interesting of the other ones is a horse called Max Charm. He's also one from one at Navan. He took a 26-runner handicap hurdle off just a mark 104. But he's unexposed in these sort of three-mile staying handicaps. I think he's got a big pot in him. He finished off well last season winning one. Yeah, I think he's got a big pot in him off this mark. Cole Murphy's not had a winner there for four months, but he's not got all that many horses, so... Maybe dangerous to read too much into that, but he's still there. And this horse has not won on his reappearance before. So against these other two, who I think will be tuned up to the max for this, he might be one. You know, he might just need this first run. I don't know. So I do think he's got a big pot in him, but hopefully it's going to come another day. Maybe... Maybe that three mile handicap at Leopardstown at Christmas Eve. And, um, yeah. So, yeah, good race that. And, yeah, I'd be. So, I play these two on Monday, and when the final decks come through, because I don't like to smash in early on anti post, just in case they don't. So, I've sort of gone up to about my max, I'd like to play that. And, when the final decks come through in a while, I'll be going in, I'll be topping up again on hollow games. I do think he'll get well back, so I'd get on early. And the Devil's Coachman's been well back through the week as well. But as of this morning, he could still sort of get, I think, 7-1 to one for them both. So maybe if the Sixers, there might be Sixers when the decks come through. If you can get any Sevens, that'd be great. And hollow games... I'd be, yeah, so I, I can see him finishing maybe around the 7 to 2 mark if I'm right about this. We'll see. Right. We don't, don't end there. It goes on. We've got the 307, two and a half mile beginners. Willie's got Factor File, Gaelic Warrior, Classical Dream entered here. Uh, this should be going to Willie. I think out of the three, he might we might get to see Factor File here, which would be exciting. Uh, next to Fassar Vega and Halkida Tabbert. Just on Halkida Tabbert, Gordon, you know, we're just getting a little bit worried about as he met with a setback. Is she okay? Gordon did a trainer, another trainer, stable tour in the, at the races yesterday. And he said she might be out in Cork in a couple of weeks. He sounded quite positive about her. I'm excited for Halker at 25, so. 
but yeah, back to this race, back to file, if he runs here, yeah, anything four to six or better would be on him. Um, yeah, it's intriguing to see how this guy's going to go. We've got him covered for the Browns and the Turners. For the Browns, we're on, what, two points at 28, so we've got him nicely covered for that. Um, the Turners just one point at 14s. If he were impressive here, and if Willie came out and said, this fella goes to Turner's, <laughs> I'd be topping up on him straight away. I'd suggest that's unlikely for Willie to be so definitive there. But we'll see. Um, just worth a mention, Let's Go Champs entered in this. If you remember, I did. he was in the tent to follow. But I thought, because he had three and a half years off the track, I thought maybe he'd keep him to hurdles. Might be a bit easier to keep him sound. But he's going chasing William Henry. I think he had a marker 136 of hurdles. And I don't know, I just saw him enter there and I just thought straight away, Kim Muir. So he could, you know, Henry tends to have a Kim Muir horse. The same connections, owner and trainer, I think, teamed up to win the Kim Muir few years back I forget the name of the horse so yeah we'll see how he goes through the season he could be a Kimio horse 136 over hurdles he got that 145 ceiling for the Kimio he'd be around that sort of mark yeah then we close the weekend out 3.42 listed bumper race and there looks some interesting horses entered here but I'm hoping Gordon finishes off the meeting the way he started it hopefully with a winner uh, we see Qualamita is here this is off that point to point list paid half a million for this horse <laughs> she'll do well to win that back ever I'd have thought she, she's got to be an exciting prospect here and yeah I think sort of four to five-ish anything like that would be a bet here and yeah it'd be uh, exciting to see her out too and there you go there you go um, another brilliant weekend um, nap nap we'll be brave We'll be brave, see if we can keep this run going. So, to get the hat trick up, we'll go for the hollow games, hollow games in the Troy Town. We'll be brave, go for one at a price. Um, although, I would keep the Devil's Coachman on side too in that race. Yeah, hollow games, nap. Yeah, what weekend? Quarter past three, quarter past three, Saturday. Be there be good right thanks for your time thanks for watching i hope i hope we managed to find a few winners there for you i hope you get some winners this week and enjoy the racing and i'll see you again on monday and we'll look back at it all okay all the best bye